Sunday and a sold-out crowd here at the Old Dominion Fieldhouse here in Norfolk. It's not just Super Bowl Sunday, it is Tennessee Sunday. Number three, Tennessee, the Lady Balls have come into town to try to take out the hometown Lady Monarchs. It is indeed standing room only. How about that at the Old Dominion Fieldhouse? It seats about 4,800 folks. There are many more crammed into this old gym in Norfolk, Virginia. How old is this gym? Nancy Rivers, I try and play to this gym. She is here along with me, Pam Ward. And we have a couple of scenes here, Nancy. Unfortunately, the dreaded ACL injury has hit both of them. Well, it has it for Old Dominion. Their leading rebounder and scorer, Lucy Amber, too, goes down before the season. She has an ACL. Then Tennessee has catching go down with an ACL. And number two's backup, Corinna Turner. She goes down with an ACL, so there goes your inside post game for at least for the Lady Monarchs. It really has been devastating for them. And of course, for big catching since she has gone out, it sort of has been a, a committee of players who have picked it up, especially people like Tanika Randall. Well, I like the fact that Randall wasn't All-American. Everybody kind of downplayed her this year, that she was in a slump. She's not in a slump anymore. Let me tell you what, great players rise to the occasion, and Randall has taken this team on her back, given them leadership, and all her stats are up, and I'm really proud of her. Right there, the young lady from Ohio is averaging 14 points a game her last four games. Nika Randall, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio, was challenged by head coach Pat Summit, who uh, basically went to her and said, we need you. We need the player that we recruited, and she certainly has done that. There was the starting lineup for the Lady Balls, and oh yeah, Michelle Snow has done a couple of things interesting this year. Well, I'll tell you what, Michelle Snow can do more than dunk the basketball. Great rebounder, great hand, and a, a force for the inside for the Lady Balls. She has two dunks so far on the season. As for the Lady Monarchs of Old Dominion, coached by Wendy Larry, they always have that international flavor this year. I'm to do Maiga. Well, Maiga is a great defender, great rebounder, but she's carrying the load offensively to the tune of about 15 points a game for the Lady Monarchs. Maiga is a senior from Mali, and actually she has one year of eligibility, and if indeed she graduates, which we expect, she will be back next year on what should be a loaded Old Dominion team. Tennessee in its orange, and there is Kristen Ace Clement sporting a new hairdo. Running right away to Gwen Jackson, and she hits the three. Well, Gwen Jackson is not only the hairdresser on the team because the braids by Ace Clement is complement of what Gwen Jackson can do, but she's knocking down three. Gwen Jackson, one of those players who has picked up that slack from Tanika Ketching's injury. And don't be surprised to see Tennessee in the orange comes out playing man-to-man -man defense. How about Maiga off the glass? Well, Maiga has to do that. She worked so hard during the summer to develop that short-range jump shot that she didn't have. Maiga averaging 14.3 points a game, leads Old Dominion in rebounding as well. And a lot of these fans on their feet at the field now. Well, like Old Dominion, they're in man-to-man -man also, but they want to keep the ball out of the middle that time a little late getting to Snow who cut right to the nose of the rim. Michelle Snow's first two points. She is averaging 11 points a game. And uh, Pat Summit and her team coming in here 20 and 1 on the season. Well, 21, but I am so impressed with the victories they've had. The two over Kentucky, the great game against Vanderbilt, and the game against Georgia right after the Tamika catching ACL tear. Offensive foul there against Old Dominion. Tennessee gets it back. And certainly that win against Georgia, an inspiring one in Knoxville, just a few days. And there you get a good look at Tamika catching. We will speak with her in the second half. One of the all-time great women. I mean, there is not a player that can say anything bad about her. A competitor and certainly uses sportsmanship. And when Pat Summit kind of gets choked up even when she talks about her. A terrific player who plays her heart out. See the trappings. Old Dominion's going to give Tennessee a lot of different looks, just like that. 
Nice play by Maiga. And Maiga gets in front of Clement and somehow controls it and gets the basket. Comes to do Maiga. You think she learned some of those skills from her grandma and her mom who played on the national team in Mali. Maiga has four points. Shot is off the mark. Randall showing her up there with the putback. Once again, yes, and the foul. Terrific work by Samika Randall. Samika Randall, 5'10", comes off the perimeter, averages nearly five rebounds a game, but if you don't lay a body on her outside the perimeter, you're going to be on a replay. <laughs> and the wrong kind of replay. Abe Clement takes a quick seat. April McDivitt trying to come in in the backcourt for Tennessee as Randall will try to complete the three-point play. Wendy Larry told me yesterday she wasn't sure if she was going to start Ali Spence, 14, who just came into the game, or if she was going to go with a smaller lineup and maybe start Char Sharon Francis. Gwen Jackson, working hard off glass, gets the rebound and the putback. Gwen has five. Old Dominion in a very tough stretch. They're playing all or three of the four final four teams in a 13-day span as Gibbon shot is off the mark. You know, that's almost like a misnomer or an oxymoron that Tennessee is playing a tough schedule. <laughs> Everything on their schedule is top 25 teams with Carol Austin from the state of Virginia. Hey, how do you like that? The little five foot nine inch player with a little jump hook. She goes across the lane. Lawson from Northern Virginia, out of Alexandria, Virginia, West Springfield High School. We are in Southern Virginia, extreme Southeastern Virginia, right, Mr. Lieberman? -Fong? Absolutely. I'm glad you have your uh, geography down. But you know, Tennessee, they do a great job putting pressure on the passer, and then they take away the passing lanes. They front the post, and if you kill your dribble, you're you're, you're in big trouble. No. A little bit of defense there. Maiga gets behind everybody. I remember that. They are going to bring Snow up in a lot of one four sets to try and take her away from blocking shots. Gwen Jackson takes it right at Gibbons who gets a hand on it. Smart play by Ali Spence. A very good decision maker. About two to one assist to turnover ratio. And that's why she's in the game. She just doesn't throw the ball away. Listed at 5'5", five, five, Spence is a sophomore who runs the point for this team. 5'5", five, five is very generous. This yeah. is a very small backcourt with 5'5", five, five, Okeisha Howard. And Howard with the play pass to Maiga. Howard is also Princess Anne High School. Architu Maiga has eight points. All eight Old Dominion points are only down three. Jackson, that three is off the mark. And Carol Lawson to McDivitt for three. Yeah. Do you know why McDivitt's in the game right now? Because Old Dominion is saying, okay, we have to give something up. This is Wendy Larry thinking. All right, we want to take away the inside, and we want to take away dribble penetration, so we have to give up the outside shot. When Jackson's going to be open, McDivitt's going to be open, and Lawson. And that is one of the uh, one of the strategies to try to beat this Tennessee team, make them shoot from the outside, and McDivitt certainly can do that. Well, you want to make them shoot from the outside, but you also want to be aggressive, and you want to attack them off the glass and attack them off dribble penetration. You know, Dominion so far in, a, in an attacking mode, but right there we're going to get a foul on Coker for setting a screen, an illegal screen. Tony Coker, one of the heralded freshmen here at Old Dominion from Monsignor Scanlon High School in the Bronx. I tell you what, sometimes it's not the screener's fault. It's do, is your teammate using the screen properly? It's her first foul, three team fouls against Old Dominion as Jackson hits one from the baseline. Gwen Jackson has seven. Gwen Jackson, all she has done, this team for Tennessee has gone by committee to try and make up the 15 points and about nine rebounds a game that they're losing with catching. Jackson has played great. Randall's played great. Snow has taken her game up a level. No, there is. Actually, it's not going to be Snow. It's going to be called on Randall. Tamika Randall called for her first foul for running into the screen. Old Dominion coming out all eight points for Maiga as they try to keep up with the Lady Boss. Thursday night, ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Tennessee has taken a 68 lead over Old Dominion and the Lady Monarchs. A lot of their recent success is certainly due to one 
head to one assistant coach who's really helped out Wendy Larry. Well, Allison Green, she's been with the Lady Monarchs for 10 years. You see her right there, but she speaks six languages too fluently. I first met her in 1983 at Howie Landers basketball camp. She was 14 years old, and Martina Navratilova was a camper. She had to guard Martina, and uh, she said Martina was pretty good, but she was afraid to hit the left hand. <laughs> but she also said that she got Martina pretty good with an elbow to the head. Well, Martina deserved that. <laughs> it might explain some things. Martina, I think that's... But really, I'm, I'm sorry, Pam, but well, very important in the success of Old Dominion's program. Absolutely, bringing in a lot of these international players like Tisha Penichero, Maurice Moshingrana, Andrade. I mean, you can just go down the line. Shot clock down to seven. Lawson takes it on her own and dribbles it in. Probably an American player she probably wanted from the state of Virginia, and Tara Lawson, absolutely. who was just big time mentally as well as physically. Just a tough kid, good, good youth football player back in Washington. Allison Reed, of course, went to Dartmouth, so those Ivy League kids are smart. Boy, Micah's playing a pretty good game, isn't she? She has all 10 Old Dominion points. Well, what they do, Tennessee rotates and gives you help on the weak side. By going to a 1-4 set, it takes away any weak side help. Well, Lawson finding Randall, who can't get the reverse to throw in. You're going to see a lot of backdoor cuts by Old Dominion quite a bit, especially if it's successful, and it has been with Micah. Old Dominion down by eight. Tennessee played yesterday, by the way, a noon game against Kentucky, which they won handily. Coulter over the corner. No. And we know she can shoot over people. At, you know, she's six foot one, and she's got a quick shot. But Tennessee doing a good job of playing defense early in the post. Tennessee's lead is only a half dozen, but Michelle Snow counters. How about the pressure on Michelle Snow? All she's doing is changing the face of women's basketball. She gets criticized for dunking the ball and her intensity level and her competitiveness. I think everything she's done is absolutely fantastic. And the criticism is, quite frankly, ridiculous. It is. It's unwarranted. How can you tell a kid not to be competitive at, an end of, at the end of the game? Carol Lawson a little bit too competitive there. As she has whistled for her first foul. Two dunks for Michelle Snow, and the last one coming against Vanderbilt. They trailed for a lot of that game. The game was in its final seconds, but no means, by no means, it was it was over. And it was a design play. She got out in the clear, and she had dunked it. And I think people also, you, you read situations, at the end of that game, as Spence goes up, Mariah Spence is coming off the bench. As you see a defense playing you, and, and uh, Coach Foster's team, was full court defense. You got to say, okay, well, he's still competing to win this basketball game. So if you're competing, I'm competing. You know what? If a guy, if Shane Battier had come down and dunked the ball at the end of the game, nobody would say anything. If you're upset with her, it's because you can't dunk. <laughs> so get working on your hop. <laughs> Most of us can't dunk, and it really was a spectacular play for her. And Joining George Ann well, George Ann Wells is the only player who's ever to dunk twice in one season, and of course only three have done it overall. Charlotte Smith did it once for North Carolina. You know, and I guess that would mean the Tennessee men who lead the nation in dunks over five or games, combined with their women, they both lead the nation. Tennessee <laughs> with two. How about that? Jackson misses, and Old Dominion Giddens gets the board. This crowd, Nancy, you played here many, many times, and it only seats about 3,800, but boy, is it loud. It's loud. They love this rivalry with Tennessee. It goes back to 1977, 1976, I should say. Foul call there against Old Dominion. It's against Sharon Francis. That is her first. Now four team fouls against Old Dominion. The series now 24-9. Tennessee leads the series, but... A lot of those wins with Old Dominion you were a part of. So we won five times in the four years that our group was here at um, Old Dominion, and we're really proud of that. Wow, Coker did not get the block. She called for the foul. So that was really good positioning down low by Gwen Jackson. If you look at the replay, Coker does a nice job with her timing, but it looks like she gets some of the body, and I don't think it was what happened upstairs. I think it was what happened downstairs that the officials made the call. And so to the eye, if you're just looking at the ball, it looked like a clean block as Jackson goes to the line. 
Tennessee during the season shoots 66. Oh my God! Who's that? I don't know. Who's that short number 10? Hey, Gwen Jackson, you need to do my hair. <laughs> what year would that have been? Then? Well, they shot my shorts. <laughs> you know, I was very upset about that. Throw them in the dryer once, and you're, you're kind of messed up. But there's a clean block by Giddens, and then a turnover, and Old Dominion will get the basketball. That's really nice. The fans cheering their picture for me. Of course, Inga Nissen is in that shot. Also, Ann Donovan. Terrific, terrific team. Three-time All-American. And the tall one. And he was six foot eight. <laughs> three-time All-American, three-time Olympian. Uh, assistant coach with uh, the Indiana Fever in the WNBA. And they're only going to play in this building a couple of more seasons and then move across the street to a spiffy new one. Oh, gosh. The new Convocation Center will be ready in about a year. It's gorgeous. Niga trying to make maybe one pass too many. McDivitt knocks it out of bounds. ODU gets it with 20 left on the shot clock. And you'll see Tennessee do that defensively. If there's a dead ball, they'll immediately go into a variety of presses, either a 1-2-1-1 one, 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 or a 2-2-1. Two, two, a little difficulty getting it in. Mariah Spence. Over McDivitt and Lawson. Yes, he gets the pine roll. Raya Spence, she is really the antithesis of Tiffany Thompson, who's a finesse player. Spence loves to get at it, mix it up, and she will battle you. Old Dominion is only down by five. That shot taken and missed. And here comes the Lady Monarch. It's a good pace right now for Old Dominion. And this is a very important possession for them. And now we hear some of that crowd noise. And a whistle after three second violation called against Old Dominion. So another turnover. Tennessee gets the basketball back. But the Lady Monarchs hanging in, trailing 21 16. Back to Northwest Virginia. Old Dominion only trailing Tennessee by five. And there is uh, one of the many jerseys. I didn't wear that one. You didn't wear that particular one? <laughs> Inga Nissen? Inga Nissen, in my opinion, one of the all-time great centers. See, I got an email from Keisha Penetero. I, I think she's the best passer I've ever seen. Ever seen. Not just in women's basketball. Really? She's playing in Poland. I mean, you have Margot Dietrich on your team. How can you not improve your passing wow. skills? It was like Pete Maravich skills. The only person I could equate her to. But it's just nice for the, you know, to have the relationship with some of the younger players in the game and, and keep that friendship over the years. Boy, a lot of contact on that, and the foul is called against Myga. That is her, her second foul. And then Old Dominion, a terrific hustle play by Coker. And the Lady Monarchs get a back fence, actually, on that play. See, now you got to realize we're going four, five against four. If you're Old Dominion, you got to pull that ball back out. Yeah, the defense really trailed the play. They did not recognize, but were fortunate as they got the foul called against Ashley Robinson. Did we not have the nicest lunch with that from today? Pretty good. She is one of the all-time ambassadors to this game. It, yeah, she has done so much. The success of this, this program, there she is right now with Holly Warlick, who's going in the Hall of Fame. Holly's to her right. June 9th, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. But look at what Pat's done. 20 straight, 25 straight 20-win seasons. And this is the second time they've done it this early in January. And we also should mention that this is the 900th game that Pat Summit has coached. Which is, and she said she wasn't aware of that as Myga hits one of two. I mean, she was blown away by that, and... Oh, gosh, that's a lot of games. <laughs> you know, I just love what she has done for the game. From a, you know, people don't remember that she was a great player. She was an Olympian. 1976, she was captain of that Olympic team that won a silver medal. Old Dominion only down by four now. And the staggering thing is, if you just think about it, 25 straight years of winning at least 20 games. That is uh, maybe the most unbelievable statistic of all. Well, you, you think, okay, I'm going to have a bad year, one bad year. But misses. And Spence can't control it, so Tennessee's going to get it right back. That's too bad for Old Dominion because they did a nice job. Spence boxes out and then loses side of the ball. And there's Wendy Larry. I mean, how many times can you be Colonial Co uh, Athletic Association Coach of the Year? You win 108 straight games. You know, both those records are very remarkable. And Wendy was my teammate my freshman year at Old Dominion. 
She was the National Coach of the Year in 97. She got all the way to the final, losing, of course, to this Tennessee team. But from outside, misfires on the three. Robinson skies for the board and gets inside of Coker for two. Every time we see Ashley Robinson, the freshman from Grand Prairie, Texas, I see just a little bit more toughness in her game. And I think that has a lot to do playing on the world junior team during the summer and then having to deal with Pat every day. Yeah, that will do it. Of course, she has those free throw deficiencies that have been well documented as Howard gets bottled up and fouled by Robinson. That will be Robinson's second foul. See yeah, Tennessee, they never let you breathe. If you put the ball on the sideline, keep your dribble because you're going to be trapped. Reverse the ball to the opposite side before the trap gets to you, so you have a two-on-one advantage. Easier said than done, obviously, for most teams to keep up with Tennessee. Mariah Spence over Lawson. Dribbled in one before, but that one does not go. And Snow with those long arms gets it out to Randall. She has Lawson to her right, but takes it by herself. Wow. Tamika Randall in the open court is like a Picasso. She knows what to do and how to use her body. And it seems to be doing that a lot more as, as Randall is called for the blocking foul, her second. Because Randall, quite frankly, has had maybe for her certainly a disappointing senior year, an up and down senior year, but since catching got hurt, she certainly has started to play like the Randall role. I think so, and so much of that is you, you, you start getting stuff in your head and it becomes mental, you start thinking the game too much, and it takes all the fun and enjoyment out of it. You play basketball. You're on one of the best teams in, in women's basketball. And it's interesting. It took the catching injury, really, to make her relax. You would think it might be the opposite. to think, oh, man, now it's all on me, but she's embraced this role. Well, I think, as, as Kat told us, she, she told her, I just want you to be a great leader for the team. Howard with the hoop and the foul. Okisha Howard, the sophomore from Virginia Beach, Keisha Howard, 15 points a game, the leading scorer on this basketball team, but this is where she does her damage. Watch how smooth she is off the dribble. Okay, one-on-one. -on -one. She has it. The little fake right there froze Lawson, and then she's just got that explosiveness to the hole in that short pull-up game. Boy, just needed that split second. Lawson picks up her second foul. Was similar to Randall. I mean, she hit a stretch earlier in the season where she didn't have her confidence, but when your coach stays with you, and Wendy Larry is a great motivator, and she stayed with her. Howard was the CAA, was on the CAA all-rookie team last year, I should say. She misses the free throw. We get a held ball, and the arrow points towards Old Dominion. You know, the, the, the thing with Howard also is that she's such a great foul shooter that the more she starts taking the ball to the basket and those are just easy opportunities from the foul line when you shoot 84 percent. Old Dominion down by six, gets it back, and that shot is off the mark by Howard. Clement behind everybody goes with that natural left hand of hers, and it works. I'm telling you right now, Tasha Butts made a beautiful play. She gets the rebound, and they're just extending Old Dominion. The outlet passes are phenomenal because they're leading to baskets. So Clement's first basket gets Tennessee back up now by eight. You can't change the defense right now by Tennessee, forcing Old Dominion to shoot the ball from the outside. Spence thought she had a little bit of a steam, but that misfires and a foul against the Lady Monarch. Watch this. I think the outlet pass is what makes her fast break. See right here, her head is up. She sees Clement, and it's a beautiful touch pass, and an ace knows exactly what to do when she has it off the reverse. Foul on Charlena Charles and Tennessee. Both teams now with seven team fouls apiece. So Butts goes to the line for the one and one Mickey DeMoss has got another case for assistant here. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they've been here forever. Al Brown, Mickey DeMoss. One of the all-time greats from Louisiana Tech. And Buck misses the front end of the one-and-one, one, but Tennessee gets it back because Coker can't gather it in. You know, it's interesting because Mickey DeMoss coaches the post, and she was a point guard, and she, there was never a shot she didn't like. <laughs> Buck liked that shot, but it did not go in. Old Dominion tries to push it back. Long shot, well, well off the mark by Howard. Coker's follow, no good. Rebound. Butts and Clement. 
fight for it. Jonas picks it up. I like what Old Dominion's doing. They're pushing tempo right now before Gen Tennessee can get their defense set. Oh, that's a very, very fortunate foul because butt pass was way too high for Snow. Well, it was that time Charles is guarding Snow underneath the basket. She's playing behind her, but you're right. The pass, I, I don't know if Snow would have gotten to the ball. So that is two quick fouls now on Charles as Michelle Snow goes to the line. It's a good play right here. I, there's not a lot of time. I mean, you got to let these women play. And I'm sure the, the you know officials take this tape, start looking at it, and they realize, okay, we've got to make some adjustments too. But I think all in all, they've done a, Kelly Bell too has done a nice job so far. Snow gets them both in. Good to see her free throw percentage up to 56%. Yeah, but you make the foul shot. Now Tennessee can set the 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. And they're not trying to steal it. They're just trying to contain you, eat some time off the, the shot clock. When you get to see the, the two sophomore guards working against it, and boy, Howard just got crushed by Clement. Kristen Clement picks up her first foul. Again, both teams over the limit, so we're going to the foul line. Howard going to the line for two shots. It was a shooting foul. So Keisha Howard, a 80% free throw shooting match again. My mic So Howard making the first one, cutting this lead now to 29 to 20. And she hits them both. Another substitution in, comes back in as Selena Charles takes a seat with her two fouls and Old Dominion hanging tough, about to hit the eight minute mark. They are down by eight. The number three, Tennessee, a team that beat them last year quite handily. 113 to 55 was the score. Tennessee over Old Dominion in Knoxville. Ace Clement misfires. That goes over the uh, backboard. Clement continuing to struggle from the floor. She's only 37% from the season. But Tennessee has the eight-point lead over Old Dominion in Norfolk. And one of the biggest honors one could have on this Tennessee team, probably the biggest, Nancy, is to wear an old sweatband. Well, that's the uh, Tamika Catching Hustle Award sweatband. You know, Randall got it at the Georgia game. McDivitt got it at the Kentucky game at Kentucky. Then Snow gets it for the Vandy game. And right there for her last game against Kentucky, she gets the headband. Now, they do wash that if you were yes. concerned about that at home. And it will be passed amongst the players. Yeah, because catching, not only is she a great All-American and last year Player of the Year, but it's her hustle. She never took a possession off. And that's the beauty. Pat Summit said in her 27 years of coaching, she enjoyed coaching her as much as anyone. Because of just because of that. And she said that they miss her hustle probably just as much as her numbers as Spence goes up for three and misses it. Clement, one on two, pulls it up, finds Jackson, who gets a nice little jumper off. <laughs> Clement comes to this program, one of the most prolific scorers in Pennsylvania, and a tremendous passer. And as her career has developed, she's just become a, a fantastic floor leader for this team. As Tennessee's been staying in this 2-3 zone and forcing Old Dominion to, you know, against the zone, if you make one or two passes, you think it's open. But that's what you have to do right there. Reverse the ball to the weak side. You get your shots at the elbow and at the baseline, but that's after you reverse the ball. But Old Dominion 0 for 3 now from 3-point range. As Snow gets the turnaround and she gets packed by Giddens. Kim Giddens picks up her second foul. And that's pretty tough. You know, let's let's face it. With Lucien Bertu at 6 foot 2, you know, Old Dominion's MVP out. And then you have Karina Turner at 6'6", the freshman from Miami. She's out. Old Dominion does not have a lot of height in the middle, and Snow is 6'5", 6'6", and Giddens, the sophomore, is just undersized. Listed at six feet tall as Snow misses the first of two. Tyra Elzey coming back in for Tennessee. Coper checks back in for Old Dominion. There is Lucien Bertu, and really it's a shame that 
the country can't see this kid play. He is unbelievable. Another hard worker in the mold of Machinguana, Sarish Machinguana, and Keisha Penicaro. She worked so hard during the summer to try and make the French Olympic team, and then she blows out her knee. And the cool thing about her, she wrote a letter to Tamika Ketchy. She told me she was watching the game. She told both of us that she was watching the game on TV. Felt so bad for catching that she wrote her a letter, and she's going to give it to her today. I think she probably did give it to her before the game. Bonding because they both tore their ACL. Howard trying to beat McDivitt, and he misses the jumper, but Spence will gather it, and with the fresh 30, Old Dominion sets up. Super play by Thompson, keeping the ball alive. Penetrates the zone and pitch. There's a pass all the way down into the corner that Howard can't hold on to for another Old Dominion turnover. It's not a bad look by Tiffany Thompson. I mean, the junior did the right thing. She catches high post, throws opposite corner. Turnovers there, actually very low. Just two for Old Dominion, four for Tennessee. Boy, Snow gets stripped nicely by Spence, Mariah Spence. Tyra Elsie might always forever be remembered for the incredible defensive job she did against Keisha Penichero in the championship game in Cincinnati. Penichero, the All-American uh, Wade Trophy winner, had 11 turnovers. Subsequently, had some used her bonus money to buy a boat called Cincy. Yeah, so maybe she owes Tyra a little bit for that. She's probably not telling a lot of the Old Dominion people that she bought the boat. Well, Tyra Elsie Elsie gets stripped by Mariah Spence, who takes it in and Boy, you got to take advantage of those. Oh, you got to finish the bunny, and Mariah Spence knows she put too much spin on the glass. McDivitt for three. In and out, Clement rebounds it. No, that quick little step. Boy, a 6'5 player with that much quickness. Well, she can score over you, Snow can score around you, and we know she'll dunk on you. Not so far today, but Michelle Snow has eight points. Tennessee now out to a 33-21 to lead here in North. Nate's new run to take this 12-point lead over Old Dominion. Women's NCAA basketball rivalry week, week presented by New York Live. How about this next game in Tennessee? Taking on number two Connecticut at Thompson Bowl. And Connecticut kids beat Tennessee back on December 30th. Check that out. 9 Eastern time Thursday on ESPN. Robin Roberts and Doris Burke going to be there. ESPN, the exclusive home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Well, you can see uh, that's a little recap of the last meeting. But that first half where Tennessee, I think, had 16 or 17 turnovers, and they regrouped, came back. It was a great second half. But, I mean, let's give Gino Oriema and his team credit. They're playing great basketball and very focused since the loss to Notre Dame. Tennessee certainly turning around since that bad first half against Connecticut. They played some tremendous basketball. Allen Spence forcing one inside. And they get the foul call against Tennessee. Well, it's a big zone, and the, the arms of Tennessee are up, and it's hard to find passing lanes. That's where you have to fake a pass to make a pass and put the ball down, maybe use more bounce passes against the zone. Gordon McDaniel calls for her first. So Coker goes to the line, shooting one and one. Boy, off the mark, and Old Dominion not taking advantage of free throw opportunities. He must stop the ball against Tennessee. And that's where Howard has tried to commit herself more to defense. Thompson working hard underneath against Snow. And then helps out there. And McDaniel to get the turnover. Wow, and then we see LaCroy Davis with that catching headband on, making a good defensive play. Yeah, but that's not a good play right there by Howard. She's five foot five, and she's dribbling into a defensive triangle. Penetrate suck in the defense, and pass the basketball to your shooter. You had her in the corner. Now we're trying to do just a little bit too much there. And then the turnover gives it back to the Volunteers. And that's where teams stay with Tennessee. And then the last four or five minutes of the half, they turn it over, and Tennessee continues to build the lead. When you're 6'5", and then can elevate on a jump shot, that's, nobody can block that. Snow has 10. Well, what you have to do against Snow is you've got to play her before she gets the basketball, because once she gets it, she's just so proficient in how she scores. So the key is not to let her catch it. Penetrate the zone, draw defense, and reverse it. And there is the first shot taken 
by Marianta Kukupinu from Sweden. Davis gets behind everybody, but misses the layup. Kukupinu ties it up. The alternate possession will keep it with the Lady Monarch. Marianta Kukupinu, a very good outside shooter for Old Dominion in the zone. Old Dominion hanging in now, down by 14. Biggest lead of the afternoon, leading Old Dominion 35 to 21 here in Norfolk, where it is sold out. Standing room tickets went on sale earlier today. So probably close to about 5,000 people are crammed into this tiny building on the campus of Old Dominion University. Well, they average about 4,100 a game, and they were drawing these crowds, I have to say, to give Old Dominion props. They were drawing these crowds back in 77, 78, 79. That's where the Tennessees and those type teams got the impetus to say, you know what, we need the crowd support, the marketing. Clement bops free on the baseline, give the assist to McDivitt. Beautiful set play coming out of the timeout by Tennessee, and they're back in what looks like a 3-2 zone. And what you have, Butts has long arms, and she plays the top of it. And that keeps the ball out of the middle. Tennessee gets it right back. Pat Summit using some more of her reserves now. Such a deep team. A little bit of body there by McDaniel. Snow with the rebound, with the foul, and the hoop. Oh, my goodness. Old Dominion Post are not doing a very good job right now on early defense. They are conceding position to Snow and to the Tennessee Post. Watch this right here. The shot goes up, and everybody's looking at the ball. Nobody boxes out Michelle Snow. Figure it out. Michelle Snow is averaging nine rebounds a game the last four games since catching went down. So Mariah Spence there with the foul, and you see the... The number is just getting more and more impressive as Michelle Snow completes the three-point play. Well, I've said it before. She has always reminded me of a young Lisa Leslie. She worked so hard on her offensive skills, and, you know, certainly everybody's going to remember her dunking, which I think is just another element in her game. Boy, and just like that, we have a 20, make that a 19-point lead for Tennessee. And it was 21-17 it was at one point in Old Dominion. Like in the UConn game, they just couldn't make shots. Myga, they really need her. She was silent for the last few minutes. She now has 13. So credit Tennessee with keeping Thompson to Myga silent. They went to that zone and took away her dribble penetration. And Tennessee's just running right now. This is up-tempo. Old Dominion's not getting back. And when they do, they're fouling. Thompson fouling Michelle Snow, who will go right back to the line. Pat Summit was telling us today if there's any 6'5 recruits <laughs> out there that schools don't want you to dunk at, you're more than welcome to come to Tennessee. She will allow you to dunk anytime you want. <laughs> Just like Michelle Snow has shown she can do. The Monistat Halftime Report coming up. We will talk about Clemson and Duke. Boy, Duke avenged with a vengeance their only loss of the season. Vanderbilt taking on number five, Georgia. More scores and highlights coming up on the Monistat Halftime Report. Duke with an incredible game today against Clemson. They'll tell you all about it. As Snow misses the second of two. Look about the game, the Rutgers game. 39, 39, 37 over Miami. And Rutgers will be the next team that comes in here to play Old Dominion. McDaniel gets pounded from behind and Maya takes it away. The Old Dominion has to play and just let it hang out right now. They have nothing to lose. Howard from way, 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 way have to be ready against the zone. That means you've got to show your hands to the passer. So that three brings it back to only a 15-point lead. And a crucial stretch here towards halftime for Old Dominion. Yeah, if Old Dominion can get a stop, maybe nail a shot. Davis, well short, but Michelle Snow all over the board. Can't get it. Myga somehow pulls it in. Myga is a tremendous rebounder. Nearly eight a game. Leads the team Coming down, knocking down the three. She only shoots 23% on the year, but the tri-captain knows how to get the crowd involved. Tri-captain with the trifecta, the crowd getting into it. Old Dominion only down now by 13. There are two centers on this team, Allie and Mariah, not related. Not related. One's from New Mexico and Mariah, 
and one is from Colorado. This is Allie. Remember we said, try and get to Tennessee before they get their defense set. This is what Spence does here. Push the pace, and everybody is diving to the middle of the paint, and nobody comes up and picks up the ball handler. Spence says, okay, fine. You know, we're down. I might as well try and get us back in it. And certainly is helping now. A couple of big threes now. Old Dominion trailing by 12 on this 6-0 run on those couple of threes in the last minute three. And that's going to be a momentum builder for the Lady Monarchs. And now they can put some full court pressure and see if they can rattle Tennessee. So we're changing defense and trapping on the wing. David. All this does, Pam, is make you rush a little bit or take a quicker shot. And create turnover. Howard gets it. So Tennessee, a good job of getting back that time. See, if I'm Maiga, I'm going to keep the ball because Tennessee's back to man-to-man -to -man defense. Try and take someone off the dribble or run that 1-4 high set that was so successful for her. And she does nicely get behind the defense for two. That would be Hamsha for two. <laughs> there you go. Hamsha two has 15 points. And the lead is only 10. Clement bumps it off her head. Uses the elbow. No foul called. McDaniel with the nice spin. Rebound to Myga. What a box out against Glenn Jackson that time. Oh, Dominion, you got 11 seconds. Make sure you get a shot that gets something for you. Boy, Spence, fortunate not called for the travel. Instead, she was fouled. I'm sure Wendy Larry said to Hamsa to Myga, get involved. And that's what happened on the last play. See, she goes to the rim. That's where she is most comfortable and successful. Ahamsha well, Maiga with 15 points. Meanwhile, back to live action. Allie Spence picking up the foul. Goes to the line for two and misses the free throw. Allie Spence, a 73% foul shooter. These are the shots you have to knock down. I mean, you figure if Alderman could get it under 10, what a, a moral type of uplifting going into your locker room. Look at this great box out on the weak side by Micah. Gwen Jackson, a tremendous rebounder going hard. I'd love to see two athletes go at it. Boy, Spence missed both free throws. Let's see if Tennessee can get the final basket. McDivitt is runs into Francis, who will be called for the blocking foul. Wow. You don't take care of business on one end. And then you're retreating on the other end defensively for Wendy Larry's team. So Tennessee right now could be down by, or, or up I should say, by only eight points. But instead, McDivitt will have an opportunity to make it a 12-point cushion at the break. And we talked about momentum, and it's reversed again for Tennessee. McDivitt, who's a terrific free throw shooter, gets the first of two. 1.6 seconds left here in the first half. See, Pam, right now you're getting defensive substitutions for Tennessee with LZ coming in the game. And for Old Dominion, they're bringing in rebounders so they can throw the ball down long and try and get a shot off. And you also get Carol Lawson out. She has two fouls. So they don't want her to pick up her third. McDivitt hits them both. The lead is 12. Now you got to get your shooters down the floor. I don't know why Howard is standing under the basket. And it's stolen by Clement. And boy, Old Dominion is fortunate to be going into the locker room down by 12. 43 to 31 is the halftime score. 10 points for Gwen Jackson. Michelle Snow has 14. No dunk yet. Let's take you to Kevin Cork back in the studio. All right, Pete Dubs, thank you very much. We have a lot more coming up. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, the 2001 Deluxe. Wake up and drive. And welcome back to Old Dominion University, Tennessee, leading Old Dominion 43 to 31 at the break as Tennessee goes for its 10th straight win since losing to UConn, and they play UConn next. Well, it's going to be a tough game, but, you know, you play at UConn or in the snow at the Harvard Civic Center. Then you have to play Thompson Bowling Arena, so it's going to be a good test for both teams. Well, they've been 
contested today so far by Old Dominion. Michelle Snow, you see, you no dunk yet, Nancy, but this kid has played a good game. I don't think he has to dunk on you yeah. to actually hurt you because she's got so many ways that she can attack you on the offense. If you don't get early defense, and that time kid, uh, Kim Giddens didn't, and she goes over, this time she goes around you. See right here, that is just too easy for someone of her ability. And Hans to do Maiga, she's worked, as I mentioned earlier, on that pull-up game, and then defensively, she creates a lot of her points on offense off her defensive work. Maiga with 15 points, four rebounds, and two steals in just 10 minutes of work there in the first half. As we take a look at the first half statistics, and the rebounding edge decidedly in Tennessee's favor. Well, not only is it decidedly, Tennessee has 14 more rebounds, but 13 of them are offensive. And even if they're missing shots, Snow and Jackson have 24.7 rebounds between them, and they're getting easy putbacks. Getting ready now here, and the second half is indeed underway. Three of the starters for Old Dominion, Giddens, Thompson, and Francis, were scoreless in the first half. Well, Wendy Larry said that this team has got to stop Tennessee from getting easy second chance putbacks, and they have not done that. And that's part of the game plan is try to make Tennessee shoot over you from the outside. But if you're going to give them those little bunnies, then they're going to win basketball games. Ace Clement called for her second foul. Tennessee starts back in their man-to-man -man defense, which is what they usually start in, and then they get a lead, and then they can go to their 2-3 zone, go to their trap. You saw there, Nancy, the quickness of Akeisha Howard, but she was unable to get that shot in. Howard had seven in the first half. And it's four around one right now. What they're doing is they're just trying to isolate snow on the inside, and Old Dominion is passing it in, saying, go ahead, beat us on the outside. Now inside 10 seconds. Randall's going to have to shoot from the outside. It's a three from the top of the key, way off the mark. And that ball will go back over to Old Dominion. Randall now 0 of 9 on the season from three-point range. Well, that's certainly not her forte of shooting the, the long shot. But if you're Old Dominion, you've just accomplished for the first possession what is part of your game plan. Make Randall shoot the basketball, not Lawson, Ace Clement, or McDivitt from the outside. Randall only played seven minutes in that first half, picked up a couple of fouls, had four points. Lawson with the pick, gets it up to Clement. Can she beat Howard? No, she's going to get fouled hard by it. Well, not only is uh, Howard foul her hard, which is what you're supposed to do, because the next time you have somebody going in for a layup, they're going to think twice about it. Maybe they'll pull the ball back out. That's not a bad foul by Okisha. It's her first foul, and uh, certainly something else you do by fouling her that hard, there's no way in heck she's going to get a three-point play. Well, you don't want them to make a three-point play. Make sure you either wrap them up early or foul them hard, just like that. Clement, two for four from the, from the field in the first half. Gets a three for See, Clement's going in hard, and she's concentrating on the basket, and that, that'll make your... Uh, just a little bit tighter. <laughs> and we see the debut of uh, Clement's hairstyle. But Gordon, she battled for the rebound and is going to draw a foul. A good hustle there by Clement. I like the fire in Ace Clement's game. All she has done throughout her Tennessee career is just do whatever Pat Summit and the coaching staff has asked her to do. She certainly has adjusted her game. A huge scorer in high school. Snow, the call scorer here, gets hacked, and she's going to go back to the free throw line. You just cannot do that. Michelle Snow is too accomplished a player. She gets the ball at the high post, makes a little move, and gets by you. So you're giving her the 13-foot jump shot. That's what you'd like her to shoot and you fouled the jump shooter constantly. That time it was down low. And that time it was Maiga with her third foul. And Snow goes back to the free throw line and knocks it in. In the first half, Michelle was four of seven from the line. But first he's been doing a better job. You know, everything sort of relates right back to the catching injury. They were shooting 65% during the season. Since the injury that as a team, they're shooting over 70%. Their rebounding is better. Their defense is better. Everybody has taken a little bit more responsibility. That pass for Giddens is too long, and Snow dribbling the ball up court for it. New point guard for Tennessee. <laughs> Snow. Nice quick step in there by Jackson, but she gets the ball deflected away. Giddens gets it to Michael, who saves it in. 
Francis working against Clement. Bounce pass inside. Giddens knocks it down, and that's Tim's first basket. And that's a sweet pass right there by Sharon Francis, drawing the defense. And when everybody collapsed in the middle, she found the open player in the gap in Giddens. Giddens averaging 7.2 points a game gets her first basket there. As Old Dominion took the lead to 13. Old Dominion is in what you would call a sagging man-to-man. -man. It's not a true get out in the passing lanes. We're going to deny you the basketball. Jackson for three. Nothing but net. When you have a post that can stick the three like that, I mean, Abby Conklin, you remember when she played at Tennessee, she was that type of a four that could stretch the defense and take you away from the basket. Boy, that is such a weapon. And again, especially if you're being dared to hit the three when you get a big player doing that. I don't think you want to dare anybody <laughs> on the Lady Ball basketball team. That might be a, a foolhardy thing to do. Great pass. Maida somehow collected it and gets her 17 points. Maida has great hands. I mean, we know what a tremendous athlete she is. And you have to remember, she lost 12 pounds back in December. She's a devout Muslim with Ramadan, and she couldn't eat. She was fasting, lost the 12 pounds. She's just now getting her legs under her. Clement gets her legs under her and then gets the three in. Ace Clement has eight. She's only averaging four points a game this year. We talked about the three-point shooting ability of Jackson. She's now 11 for 20 on the season, which is, even in my poor math skills, that's over 50%. Well, she was shooting 53% coming into the game. And with your math skills, that's probably <laughs> going to get her over 54. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. We've got a foul call here. Please send your calculators to Pam Ward at yeah, do I need them if I can even turn them on? That's Carol Lawson's third foul. Lawson with four points in the first half. She's the best free throw shooter on this team. It's a 92% clip. So she's the best at a lot of things. She's a great outside shooter, three-point shooter, over 47%. She can take you off the dribble, and she'll hit clutch shots on you. She is a gamer. That sounds like to see more of a defensive effort from her on most days, and that's a charge call, and Wendy Larry's about to pull her hair out. You know, and that's something that Tennessee might have gotten in a scouting report because that time they, they ran pick and roll with Maiga, and she slipped the pick, and Tennessee rotated over with their weak side and drew the foul. Oh boy, that could be deadly, Nancy. That is four fouls now on Maiga. Well, I think you probably have to go zone right now and not let her play Jackson man-to-man -man until you get her out of the game. And there is... Coker is going to check in for her at the next available, the next whistle. Jackson can't control it, finally does, and somehow gets the basket. Boy, Gwen Jackson, 15 points. And she is a new player this season. Oh, my gosh. She has just taken her game to a different level as a sophomore. Jackson, go ahead. 19th in rebounding in the SEC. A little bit of shaky confidence last year as a freshman. You don't see it at all now as a sophomore as Maida misses. But, you know, there are some players that have heard of Pat Summit. Oh, God. Lawson. Lawson to Jackson. But Carol Lawson showing she doesn't need to score to be effective on the court. That's 17 points for Jackson. The lead is 21. And Wendy Larry going to take a time out to talk about this. But see, see, what I like is Lawson draws all the defense to one side of the floor. Then you go with that diagonal pass. If you're a post for Tennessee and you run the floor, your guards are going to reward you. And really, there's the, the back of the uh, coaching staff right there. Al Brown, the Silver Fox, in a very intricate part of the video of breaking down film, just his knowledge of the game. The only man, the only coach who's been to the men's Final Four, the women's Final Four, coached at Purdue. He's been all over the Big Ten. Indiana native, played at Purdue, and as Nancy said, mentioned, uh, man, mentioned he coached at Purdue. Also coached at Minnesota, right. the men's team, and uh, he's done some good things at the University of Tennessee, obviously. Well, with Wade Houston when he coached at Tennessee, and then Pat said, you know what, I want somebody who hasn't been in our game that can offer some more insight, because she's always wanting to learn as Tennessee uses this timeout to set their 2-2-1 three-quarter court trap. And Maiga is indeed out of the game. Coker in for her. Maiga sitting with four fouls. Against this, they make you put the ball around the perimeter. They never let you get the ball in the middle. 
really that's the philosophy behind this trap. And it certainly worked there. Mariah Spence forced to take that long three-pointer. Tennessee Pat Summit's team now up 56-35. 21 points against Old Dominion, even though Tamika Catchings, unfortunately, is on the sidelines. We're honored now to be joined by Catchings, and it's got to be tough to be watching this. Yeah, it is, but, you know, we're a great team, and we got a long way to go, so I'm excited. Tamika, of course, uh, tearing your ACL. You still thinking about trying to come back this year? You know it. You know it. I, uh, I want to get back, hopefully, by the time we're in the championship round, and then, you know, to help me, hopefully, in the WNBA. Well, it's very ambitious trying to get back on that injury. Well, you have one of the best trainers in all of sports and Jenny Moshek, and she knows a little something about getting players back from ACL. Are you ahead of schedule as you get ready to go into surgery next week? Well, I think I am. Um, you know, like you said, Jenny Moshek is doing a great job as far as we have me. Um, I think I'm pretty ahead of schedule. And like you said, I don't go into surgery for another week, so I have a long time to go hitting that shot there for Old Dominion. Tamika, did you say anything to your teammates after the injury? Because obviously they, they're, they're feeling a lot of pressure to, to get 15 more points, 8-9 rebounds a game, but you're hustling your desire. I think um, one of the main things is just coming out. This team really knows what they need to do. Um, you know, we, even though I have 15 points and 8 boards, it's not going to take one person to make it up. And everybody knows that we have to do it as a team effort. Well, Pat said in the 27 years that she's been coaching that you've actually been a joy to coach because not just your stats, but your intensity. You never take a practice off. You never take a possession off. She's uh, she's coached quite a few All-Americans, Olympians, so that's uh, a heck of a compliment to you. Yes, it is. Um, like you said, I just, basketball, I just love to play it. And, you know, for me to come out and give, give it my all anytime I can, I just love it. Okay, well, we're going to let you audition for our job, so you can start telling us what you see with your team here. Well, I think uh, as far as first half goes, um, ODU is doing a great job as far as getting to the boards and attacking our defense. Um, offensively, we're not getting on the boards and we're not getting second shots, and that could be one of the things that hurting us the most. Um, we had a lot of people in foul trouble from the first half, but this half, hopefully, will change it around. Gwen Jackson inside, boy, she's really had a great year, hasn't she? Oh, yeah. I think Gwen has definitely stepped it up this year. I think the last couple years that she's been here, she hasn't really played as hard as, as she could, but this year she really came out committed and willing to put forth whatever she can for this team. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about the standards that you have for, for you in Tennessee because you were up 18 points at the half, and you were you'd be a brutal player. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, as far as sitting in the, and for the halftime talk from Coach Summit, you kind of, you know, learn a lot, but even watching us, um, I guess I do have high expectations, but I know this team is capable of doing a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of other things, so, you know, I'm just really excited. But you think with rehab, the prognosis could be that you might be able to be healthy enough for the NCAA tournament? I hope so. You know, I think, um, Jenny said, the more that I do now, the better off I'll be. So, I've been working really hard as far as get my knee to bend, and that's, that's the hardest part right now. I also know that you've gotten literally cards from all over the country. A lot of people have contacted you. That must be overwhelming. It is. You know, um, I'm just really thankful to be in the position that I am. Even though I did tell my ACL, it seems like people from all over have sent me letters just sending me best wishes and sending me flowers and phone calls and everything. Even UConn fans? Oh yeah, even UConn <laughs> fans. Tell us about the letter that Lucianne Bertu from Old Dominion sent you. Well, she just, um, she kind of just spoke about being in the same situation two times and just to keep my head up and, you know, not really focus on what I can't do, but focus on what I can do for this team. Were you surprised that you got that when you came uh, in, into the field house today? Oh, yeah, you know, but, I mean, I, I, I was surprised, but I'm really excited. Meanwhile, Tamika Randall goes down hard. She fouled, but at least gets the hoop. And that's your partner in crime. Your freshman class, the class of 2001, was touted as one of the greatest recruiting classes of all time. You had Teresa Jeter, who's now in South Carolina, Ace Clement, you and Randall, you win the national championship your first year. Everybody thought you were going to roll the four. Well, 
this has been, you know, like you said, this has been a great class. We've all had a great time together, and, you know, we just, I don't know, I, I really can't say much more, you know. We're really excited about this is our last time around and coming out the same way we came in. Mika Randall completing the three-point play. She has seven, and the ball's going right back to Tennessee. Only 37 points. Did you catch the Rutgers score yesterday? Rutgers beat Miami 39-37? Yeah, low-scoring game, but, you know, Rutgers has some great players, and they're known for their defense, so one of the main things is for them is just their defensive intensity. And Rutgers will be the next team that Old Dominion plays. We did just get a shot there of Lucienne Berthieu on the bench for Old Dominion. She will be back next year, so at least she's fortunate enough to take that red shirt year. And you got UConn coming up. Yep. <laughs> We're really excited. Um, you know, we knew we had to come here first and play ODU. They're a great team, but now, you know, looking ahead, we do have UConn on Thursday, and we got a, a lot of work to do before that. Do you help your teammates out as far as preparation is concerned? Is there anything you say to them specifically before games? Not really specifically. I think um, I just come out and try to just tell them to play their hearts up. You know, that's all they can do. And, I mean, everybody has to come out ready to play. You just can't be three out of five of the starting five. Physical there. McDevitt called for the foul on Howard. And we talked to her, your coach today, and she was saying she talked to all, all the freshmen, every one of them, when asked who was their role model, their most inspirational person that they've ever met. They all picked you to me. <laughs> I think um, this year I've really focused on becoming more of a leader for my teammates. Um, in the last three, the past three years, I don't think I've really been available or made myself available to the people coming in and to my teammates. So one of the main things that I've really focused on this year is just coming out and helping the freshmen. Now, is that something that you maybe had a conversation with your dad or your sister? Or it, you know, because your dad was a great player for Philadelphia. Did you think about, well, maybe I should go to them. It's my senior year. They've experienced a lot as athletes. I think uh, the main thing for me is that Pat Summit and the coaching staff have told me for three years now that I need to become more of a vocal leader for this team. So I just kind of took it upon myself to just go out and make sure I help the freshmen. Let me get the first free throw there. And one thing that, on top of everything else, being the Naismith National Player of the Year, you graduate in three and a half years. That's unbelievable. Was that something you thought about coming into Tennessee you'd like to get out early? Yep. You know, I'm, I'm really persistent. I, my whole life is based on what you guys see on the basketball court. I go 100 miles per hour in just about everything. So. You know, it took me since 20 years to graduate. <laughs> Absolutely. I came here and I said, you know what, you can experiment with me and we'll see if it works. But really, it is pretty unbelievable. You and Randall doing such a great job academically. I think we kind of pushed each other. Um, I kind of told her I was graduating in December, probably last last uh, spring. And so she was like, well, I'm going to graduate with you. So we just did it together. Tennessee right now all over Old Dominion leading 64 to 37. Breaking open, open what had been a close game for most of the first half. Francis with the steal takes it in over Clement. Ron Francis' is first two points. In a tough second half for Old Dominion, only their eight points in half. It just seems to me, you played for Pat, I've played for Pat, been teammates and had her coach me. She gets in the locker room at halftime, she gives you that look, she gives you the game plan, and her expectations are so high. You know, she's not here to try and bury Old Dominion again, but it's just the intensity of the woman. Yeah, Pat, like you said, Pat does have high expectations for the team. And, you know, when we're not even close to those expectations, she gets really mad at us. But, you know, it's one of those things, when you come to Tennessee, you know you're going to be playing for the best, and you know your, the expectations are high at all times. And we see her now on the bench, up by a lot, and she's still coaching, coaches right to the end, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. You know, she can't sit down too long, <laughs> but um, I think that's what makes her such a great coach. She comes out, you know, she never sits down, no matter how far ahead we're up. She's always coaching. Give her what game film of when she played, or Holly, or... I think there's game film of Mickey Demois, but it goes back so long, it might be <laughs> kind of <laughs> violent stuff. Brainy, <laughs> black and white. No, we don't really sit down and watch. We watch uh, a lot of tape about us. So. Tasha Butts now going to the line. Tasha, one of those who says that you are definitely an inspiration to her. And starting to see some more of the reserves getting in today. She knocks down the first one. 
I think Tasha done a great job this year, especially since I've been hurt, just coming out really focused. And, you know, every game we got we got a big joke about her coming out and playing her best ball. And who's your roommate on the team? My room by myself. See if she gets a super <laughs> treatment. All right, let's get the ball. Tamika Catchings, All-American Player of the Year. Thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you back out there. All right, Tamika Catchings joining us here. Tennessee is overwhelming Old Dominion. Welcome. Welcome back to Old Dominion, Tennessee, now with a 27-point lead over the Lady Monarchs. And again, we want to thank Tamika Catchings for stopping by. And you talked about that, Nancy. Only eight points for ODU here in the second half. Well, they just turn up the defense, and if you're missing shots, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that was a problem in the UConn game. Old Dominion only shot 25% in the first half, and they were 1-16 of in the game from three. So if you can't, it's tough enough to score against a team like Tennessee that limits opponents to 36% shooting, but they're not getting to the line and they're not getting any baskets in transition. If Tennessee comes out and they go to their 2-3 zone, let's see if they trap out of it. It was interesting to hear Catchings talk about how they had trouble rebounding in the first half and they out rebounded Old Dominion by about 14. So they're going through perfection all the time. That's not perfect. McDivitt takes about a half step too many on that bounce pass going for the travel. I really have always enjoyed watching April McDivitt. Uh, she's from Indiana. She was Miss Basketball there. You know what that state has done for both men and women's basketball. From tiny Connorsville, Indiana. Hometown, same hometown as Al Brown. And he lets us know that just about every time we see him, right? <laughs> <laughs> terrific basketball. And McDivitt as a sophomore, playing much better defensively than she did as a freshman, something that Pat Summit puts a premium on. That's a premium move from poker. Well, if you want to play at Tennessee and you want to get more time, we, you know, I think everybody knew what her offense was about, but when you decide you're going to commit on the defensive end, it, uh, it, that, you're, you're going to be rewarded with more playing time. Well, certainly, you're going to see the minutes pile up. See, that's what I like about Gwen Jackson. She made her move. She was stopped. So she passes it. They go weak side. So, uh, Lawson with the miss. Spence battling. Jackson on the floor, as is Howard. And we're going to get a good old rugby scrum. And the ultimate possession will keep it Tennessee's way. Tennessee has such an incredible schedule. Not only, you know about the SEC, they have six teams in the top 25, Pam, but they are 12 and 1 this season already against top 25 teams, and they play at least four more top 25 teams. At least four more, then they'll face some more in the SEC tournament. Snow gets bodied by Charles and draws the foul. He talked about that schedule, and the next game, after they are finished here today, all they got to do is play UConn, then Alabama, Mississippi, and then they will be at Florida. Carol Ross doing a great job with that Boy, Florida patching team. that team together, isn't she? Three of her players for ACLs this year. Well, she's a great, great coach. I put her in that group with, like, Muffet McGraw, with Gail Guesting Corps, because America really hasn't had a chance to see them a lot but one of the bright young coaches in the game. And if she could keep her kids healthy, shoot, they're already in the top 15. Imagine what she could do with a, a full cadre of players as Snow hits one of two. Oh, cadre. C-A-D-R-E. Okay, so you I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. It's a 17 points, Pam Ward. Nancy Lieberman Klein from Old Dominion as Spence knocks down that three. Mariah Spence. He has seven points, and that gives the crowd finally something to cheer about here in the second half. And you have to give Old Dominion credit. They're still fighting. Well, they will always fight because it's the nature of the program and the tradition of the program. You don't win three national championships. You don't win 108 games in a row in conference without having that fighting instinct. And this is a fantastic crowd, and they will always keep you involved with your enthusiasm. They have not lost in, in uh, CAA play since 1995. 108 straight games. Well, they had a tough game against James Madison. They trailed for 38 minutes, and then they held on, and they beat uh, the Duke. But I tell you what, how do you, if you're playing against a team that's won so often, if you're a coach, 
don't say anything. I mean, you know that this is a year that maybe Old Dominion might get upset in conference play because of the injuries. But it really surprised me that East Carolina's coach, E. Stokes, would say, well, Old Dominion is probably going to lose a conference game this year. All it does is fire up the rank and file to go out there and play harder, especially against your team. Lawson dribbles in that three, and I know Kim Giddens, especially, was one of the players who was offended by that, and they take that as an extra challenge. And, yeah, just it's better not to say anything. Yeah, well, you tell your kids, you know, don't give them any, you know, uh, locker room fodder so they can get out there and be more motivated to play. You keep that within you know, your coaching staff and your team as you see all the banners. Uh, they're going into a new arena next year just so they have enough room for the banners in the CAA. They're running out of space here. Nine straight CAA championships. Five straight years now they have been unbeaten in their conference. They've been to the NCAA tournament 17 times, five straight trips to the Sweet 16. Well, and they're going in, I, I said, next year, trying to push them in a year earlier, but it'll be 2002. Boston misses. And they're going to build uh, that. They've, they've already got some of the supports up across the street in what should be a beautiful new field house and a new arena for this team. Well, it'll seat 8,500 people. They'll use it to draw students on campus because we've really never had that besides the field house. The men play downtown at, at the scope, and for them to be able to have that type of arena on campus, I think is really beneficial to get the students involved. And Jim Jarrett, who was the athletic director when I was here, really has been a catalyst and a visionary in women's basketball. The same with Joan Cronin, the athletic director for Tennessee, who's here. Sean Francis knocks down the three. She has five, and the lead keeps getting trimmed away. Now down to 21. The Old Dominion made this run at the end of the first half, and you'd like to see a team fight. Lawson knocks down the three. Knocks it down and looks towards the bench like, look what I did. And you know, Pat Summit, I've seen her change over the years. She kind of gives her the little <laughs> nod with the finger like, I like your game. I'm glad I gave you that scholarship. And you, and you wouldn't have seen that a few years ago from Pat Summit. As Francis answers with a three in a row. Two quick threes for Francis. Let me see if Wendy Larry's waving the towel at Francis. <laughs> Wendy Larry doesn't go anywhere without her towel. Gotta have that towel. That's like John Thompson in the towel. Tarkanian, of course, used to chew on it as McDivitt dribbles out a three, and we have a foul underneath. And Pat Summit talked about that with us, just how she has changed. You now the game has changed, and Tennessee's style of play has changed. And you've got to do that. Some coaches, though, have not done that. There's been some coaches who've been around 20, 25 years who have not changed. She has and the success certainly followed. Well, I think that you, she had to become less predictable over the years, and she has changed with the times. Defensively, she used to be primarily a man-to-man -man team. We're going to beat you with our footwork, just with our intensity. Now she's switching her defenses. They're trapping. They're going to zones. And you can see what that has meant. She's only behind the wizard, John Wooden, in NCAA Championship 1. But missing the... First of two, all the mini now with 10 team fouls, so Tennessee in the double bonus for the rest of the game. Six team fouls against Tennessee. And she was also talking about getting that seventh title, and we were kidding with her about Ace Clement, you know, with the braids. And I was, you know, there are some coaches who have taken dares, you know, when you shave your head. She said, sure, she'd braid her hair if they get number seven for it. Oh, but of course, they haven't asked her yet. That's right. <laughs> But maybe they will now. Uh, so she would do a lot of things other than braid her hair to get championship win number seven. They have a huge lead here in Norfolk. Link ESPN2. Dude, if I had a job, I'd be taking a week off. Nobody has left the building yet, even though Old Dominion trails Tennessee by 22. College basketball doubleheader coming your way on Tuesday at 7 Eastern time. It's all Michigan as the defending champion Spartans take on Michigan and Ann Arbor at 7 Eastern. And number five, Tennessee. This is men's basketball. Tennessee coming off that double overtime loss to Georgia, taking on Florida. See it all Tuesday for more log on to ESPN.com. Cam, how about the Maryland Duke game yesterday? Did they play? Un oh, I'm sorry, you went to Maryland, my bad. How can you blow a 10-point lead with 54 seconds left on your home court, man, to leave them in fun? Look, but I didn't get my degree from that. I'll tell you what, that's why Duke is Duke and Maryland is Maryland. you got to win those basketball games. Thanks, Nancy. Of course, the Super Bowl is later on today. A lot of people probably know that. Oh, good time. 
Shot clock down to six. Long, long three. Launch and miss by Francis. And look at McDivitt bat. Maiga's going to try to catch her. She has four fouls and somehow does not foul her. And then the strip of McDaniel. Francis all alone for the two. And you got to give this team credit, Nancy. They are hustling. So they're not quitting. They're going hard to the basket now. And I have to tell you, this is a team that is probably in preseason form with all the injuries that they've had. Wendy Larry says players are just now coming around. As Snow says, well, I can shoot over you. I can shoot around you. <laughs> I can just plain shoot. 19 points for Michelle Snow. I think Michelle Snow has a chance to be an All-American this year because... She just gets better on both ends of the floor. And does it very quietly, too. So, you know, you know, when she's not dunking the ball, that's 19 points for her on a variety of spin moves. And she does play terrific defense as well. As Lawson gets that miss. And Lawson takes it all the way. Boy, if that one would have gone in, I think we might have had to leave the building. <laughs> Micah gets the rebound. Her Lawson probably has a ton of people here. Complimentary tickets for probably at a premium for her. As Francis drives and draws the foul. Austin again from upstate Virginia, near the Washington, D.C. area. Snow's called for her second foul. And Pat Summit's going to go right back to the bench. Ace Clement, Tamika Randall, and Gwen Jackson going to check in. Well, she's called off the dogs. I mean, she's not pressing you full court. And that's something that... It, also, Gino Oriema didn't do when the score was out of hand in the Connecticut, Connecticut game. And Wendy Larry really appreciated the fact that you can't tell teams or players to stop playing hard, but you can, from a coaching perspective, you know, not try and just drill somebody, especially people that you respect. And there certainly are personnel changes that you can make to, to calm it down a little bit. Well, everybody's going to have their day, and you hope that you've done something with some sportsmanship even though you know you're trying to play and compete for a championship francis has 11 points all of them coming here in the second half and we mentioned boy old dominion playing all four final four teams this season and of all seasons they do it when they lose for two and turn on her backup jackson drawing contact poker with the foul it's a really good combination for tennessee they, they play a two-person game on the strong side and they get everybody on the weak side so lawson that's her read if the defense goes under the screen she can shoot the shot if they try and body up and come over then jackson can either roll to the basket slip to the basket or draw the foul which is exactly what she did so when jackson right back to the free throw line and gwen jackson now with 20 points on the afternoon nice when you're a young kid and you're in the eighth grade and you've wanted to play for the Tennessee program and for Pat Summit since that time and then you get your game so good because you've worked so hard and put yourself in a position to have success and then she offers you that scholarship you probably go okay <laughs> so where do I sign give me get the pin <laughs> right Giddens who had uh, nothing in the first half now has six points Clement He's firing that time on the three, and Michelle Snow just goes up and gets it. Jackson, nice little spin move around Coker. So many ways to hurt you. Oh, your offense, you get the offensive rebound if you're the Lady Vols. Now your defense for Old Dominion is not set, and Coker was not in good position for Jackson. So a timeout taken now by Old Dominion as they fall behind 80 to 57. Gwen Jackson has uh, her career high 25 points she had against Illinois earlier this year. She's only two points away from that. Winter X Games are coming up, Nancy. February 2nd to the 6th, Mount Snow, Vermont. It's the 5th annual Winter X Games. Some of the world's greatest extreme athletes, they do crazy things. Skiboarding, snow mountain biking, snowboarding, snow cross, and ultra cross. Your specialty. I just started to train for that. You said, I think you're a little late. ESPN, ESPN2, ABC have it all. Log on to ESPN.com. Would you really do that stuff? Only if Pat Summit made me. <laughs> you know, I bet if you challenged her, she would do it. Don't you think in a heartbeat? If she thought she could win a national right. championship. <laughs> she would do it. A couple years ago, they talked about if they won the championship, she'd have to get a tattoo. You know how kids yeah, always have that now. she escaped with that one. She did escape with that one. Then, you know, with the braiding the hair. 
I've seen her loosen up a bit in the day by going <laughs> to the 2-3 zone. But she would have rather have probably had her teeth pulled out than do that in the old days. Didn't. Misses on that follow. Snow with another rebound. She leads the break. Snow to Lawson for two. Give the assist to Michelle Snow. She has so much confidence in her game. She knows exactly what to do with the ball when to give it up. Lawson has 12. Giddens continues a nice second half push. She has eight points. 22nd timeout. Called here. And uh, Michelle Snow again uh, making headlines earlier this season as well as last week for doing something special. Well, the reason why this is special because only Charlotte Smith and Georgiana Wells had dunked in a game. This was against Illinois in Maui. And then here you see it again from a different angle. I mean, that's just nice, getting up there, following through. And last week, this is current events, if you haven't heard about it. It upset a lot of people in, at Vanderbilt. And like I said, it, you know, maybe she's just a little happy right there. But this is a fierce rivalry. I mean, come on. You know, if you're going to get up and guard her, she's just going to go up and power it through. She probably shouldn't have hung on the rim like that. She but did get a technical for it. She got a tee, so she got a dunk, she got a tee. That's one, that's one thing, Pat, something, something you know, they asked her about the dunking. She said, well, I'd like to see her not hang on the rim next time, <laughs> which is, you know, about all you can say. Yeah, well, but other than that, you know, pretty good. Lawson with the miss. Oh, boy, Howard somehow was able to catch up to that pass. She's probably the only one on uh, Old Dominion that could track it down. I was, about to say it. <laughs> I was about to say it was out of bounds, and it was a, it was a turnover. Mariah Spence gets the rainbow. Mariah Spence is going to have a great career. She's an incredible shooter, great work ethic. A lot of contact. Lawson hits the deck. And the foul is going to go against Old Dominion. Myga. That will be five. Be. Yeah, My, Myga fouls out with 2.54 left to go. And boy, there's been a lot of contact in this game. But you know, the difference between Kessings going out and Tennessee having five or six All-Americans on the bench to kind of fill the void, Old Dominion doesn't have that depth. So Myga has so much pressure on her to give even more without having Turner and what, without having Bertu, your, your two main post people. So Myga will foul out with 17 points. She averages just over 14 a game, but Myga only had two of those 17 here in the second half. Ten Myga. Tennessee's defense, I'm sorry, Pam, they did turn it up a notch, and they're preparing for one team right now, right. Thursday. We got uh, a visit coming up from UConn. That game will be on 9 Eastern time on ESPN. Robin Roberts, Doris Burke. How'd those guys get that game? Get to go to Knoxville. Unbelievable. Oh, well, good to watch it. Basketball Hall of Fame is in Knoxville. Women's Basketball Hall of Fame with the great Holly Warlick. The assistant coach at Tennessee will be inducted on June 9th. Rightly so. Very well deserving. And of course, you're in there. Pat Summit both last you, year. And both you and Pat in both Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame. I have driven by the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield. I have a bunch of pass it. Can you get me in? Glad to see you. And I've also driven by the one in Knoxville. So I, that's two drive-bys for me. That's as close as I'll ever get. Boy, Snow got the block, but also got a little bit too much body. She called for her third foul. The Old Dominion is using this game right now to just continue to develop more of these players who are going to be go-to players for Old Dominion. Nice entry pass by Sharon Francis and a beautiful move right there by Giddens. Giddens missing the first of two. And the one silver lining, I, I guess, in Virtue getting hurt, she will be back next year. And this team is going to be loaded next year. Myga should come back. She does have one year of eligibility. This is going to be a pretty good ball club. It could be if there's no injuries. Right, that's the big if these days. But you're right, because the two seniors they have are Bertu and Myga. And they can come back. So at least there's a luxury there next year. This year, though, Tennessee beating Old Dominion. Our new presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, the 2001 Deluxe. Wake up and drive. I'm a woman, phenomenal woman. ESPN.
Stand presents the phenomenal women of college basketball. 29 regular season games. The selection show with Robin Roberts. Exclusive coverage of 30 tournament games, including the NCAA Final Four. Because I'm a woman. Phenomenal woman. That's me. And we all look forward to doing the uh, NCAA tournament. The journey begins and ends right here on ESPN with that tournament selection special. All of those games, the Final Four from St. Louis and the championship game on April Fool's Day. They're calling it Arch Madness. You're going to be busy. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be in St. Louis. You're going to be there, right? I'm going to be hanging there. out, hanging out, being a part of the team. And the regionals this year in Birmingham, Pittsburgh, Denver, and Spokane. Those are the regional sites. And this is probably the most wide open the NCAA tournament will have been with all the great talent, with Notre Dame having a phenomenal season. Well, with another rebound, as you figure right now, they would have one of the number ones, but especially that fourth number one, Duke having a terrific year, Purdue is up there, it's going to be very exciting, and another difficult task for the people who have to fill out those brackets. Oh, the selection committee, I don't envy them being behind closed doors. That would be fun to be able to just sit in during the committees reviewing all the teams and just kind of hear what the process is. I think it would be fun until it got to be about the third day of doing that. <laughs> well, actually, we got to do it in a rather compressed period of time. But, yeah, it's, it's got to be some stuff lying in that room. Uh, there's a, a lot of pressure on the committee. But, you know, RPI is very important. Strength of schedule. And certainly Tennessee and UConn and people like that have fantastic strength of schedule. Lakeisha Howard getting her 11 points. You know, Pam, the, the fact that Tennessee scheduled the game at Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix against ASU. They oh, went sorry. to TCU coming back from Hawaii. I mean, she still continues to do things for the promotion of women's basketball. And just playing this game, they played Kentucky at noon yesterday, so you have two games in two days. You have to travel. And, you know, I asked her about that. It's like, she probably does more than than any other coach as far as doing little special things. But I know very few coaches who would have played at Bank One Ballpark, who would have played today on a back-to-back, or even if it means being on national television. And she said, you do that because you've never arrived. It's always a journey. And she looked at it like that, because you would look at her and say, hey, Pat, you got all these titles, you have this terrific program, you don't need to do this, but in her mind, she does. Well, that's the beauty of who she is, is that she's very competitive, but she also is very humble and a very giving person and very receptive to continuing to learn. You know, when, when Coach Oriema was running the triple post and they were beating Tennessee, she went to Phil Jackson mm -hmm. to teach me the triple post. I've got to figure out how to beat UConn, and they're running something that I'm not that familiar with. And so there's always another challenge, and she's always willing to do things for the betterment of the game to help bring other programs up and help bring up the, the visibility of the sport, which is really phenomenal. So Tennessee is about to go to 21-1 and on the season. They are, by the way, 8-0 in the SEC, which is only the best conference in the country. Well, there, there have been some incredible teams in the LSU. Sue Gunner continues to just get it done every year. And Jim Foster, what he's done with Vanderbilt this year. I mean, I love the team. I like Chantel Anderson. Terrific player there, got into a little bit of foul trouble and was not too effective against Tennessee last week as Howard draws the foul. And we talk about the SEC, and some props, I think, definitely for the Big 12. Oklahoma with a big win today over Texas Tech. Baylor uh, had a big win earlier this week. Texas, Jody Conrad, uh, really resurrecting the program there. All-time winning as coach in the history of women's basketball. And in the halftime report, I saw we showed a highlight. Stacey Dales had one of those sick no-look passes for Oklahoma this afternoon. She's a lot of fun to watch. She is a highlight film. But there's a lot of players around the country this year that we've had a chance to see. You know, Danielle Cochran from uh, Baylor just playing phenomenal. Two points more for Akeisha Howard. And yes, this is the 900th coaching game in Pat Summit's career. She says she's having a lot of fun. She's showing no signs of slowing down. And her team has been very impressive this afternoon, considering, again, that they played about 26 hours before tip-off in another game. Well, not only that, but, you know, being a mom, taking Tyler Summit on the road. Okay, here's a trivia question before you read the promo. How many kids under the age of 15 have more national championships than Tyler Summit? I'm say none. <laughs> none. <laughs> Even I could get that one. 
speaking of the national champions, we have the defending national champions, the Connecticut Huskies, taking on these Lady Volunteers coming up Thursday, 9 Eastern Time. Rivalry Week presented by New York Life continues. Tennessee lost game number one in the snow. Of course, it was inside. 81-76 was that final. See you Thursday, 9 Eastern, ESPN, the exclusive home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. These two played in the finals last year. Maybe again this year. Well, who knows? I mean, uh, UConn's second half was as good a second half as anybody I've ever seen in women's basketball. But, you know, again, you can always make the argument that Ace Clement didn't play because she got hurt her ankle the morning of that game, so that will always leave it up to speculation. Right, but as well as UConn played, though, I don't think that anyone could have made a difference the way that they were executing, the way UConn executed, that all those uh, back doors, and they just were playing their best basketball of the season at the best time. Well, they have a great player, certainly. Vetlana Brasimova is uh, being considered for player of the year. Shea Ralph, I mean, Sue Bird, it, you can just go on and on with that team, Swin Cash. And uh, you have two of the great fans in stores, Connecticut. They're, they're always one or two in attendance. Tennessee leads the nation over 14,000 a game. I mean, they just go at it back and forth. Competitive in every respect. His butt goes to the line and knocks it down. We saw a shot there of Ace Clement on her knees. I mean, just cheering, you know, into it just like their coach. They certainly model their, you know, are like their coach in that respect. Well, this is a very tight team, one of the tightest uh, Pat says she's ever been a part of and they're very unselfish and they're very focused on what they want to do Yeah, she said to us. I love this team <laughs> She says she really just has a lot of fun and that has to make your job that much more enjoyable well, When you enjoy coaching the team that you have if all the hours that coaches put in it makes it worthwhile Boy good work there by <laughs> Coker Monique Coker battling to the end has six points going to get this foul, but I tell you what, Wendy Lowry is going to take this and use this as a catalyst for Old Dominion as they progress throughout their season. If she gets this team, not only in the NCAA tournament, and they get one or two, they sneak out some wins, this might be her finest coaching job that she's ever done, even better than 97 when she had Machiguana and Nairi Roberts and Tisha Penetero. And got all the way to the final as McDivitt gets that free throw. And coming up next for them, in this building on Wednesday night, Rutgers comes to town, the fourth of the final four teams that they will be facing during the regular season. You see Vivian Stringer, uh, just one of the all-time great coaches and people in the game. She is very difficult. If you play against a Vivian Stringer team, I guarantee you, you're going to learn something about your team. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Terrific pass. Coker knocks it in. What a pass. Just putting it, threading the needle off the bounce pass by Francis. Sharon Francis from West Lanham Hills, Maryland, went to Super High School in Prince George's County, getting that assist. So a kinship, Maryland. You know, it's a PG County thing. <laughs> We're now inside 20 seconds. Tennessee, next up to them, a date with the University of Connecticut, Thursday night on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Don't miss it. I'll be eating nachos at Nancy's house watching that one, right? <laughs> Invitation not out? I think we could be eating nachos tonight watching the football right, game. Right, the football game coming up. Tennessee up here by 17. I think Old Dominion has to be very pleased with how they started the second half. They only had the eight points early, but it's under 20, and this could have been a 30-point game if they weren't mentally ready to compete for the whole half. And with nine-tenths of a second left, we get one more whistle. Tennessee will inbound it as they get ready to take on the Huskies. Old Dominion will be taking on Rutgers here on Wednesday. Pat Summit's 900th career coaching game ends nicely for her as Tennessee defeats Old Dominion 87-70. Coming up, ESPN, the magazine sports reporter, for Nancy Lieberman Klein, all of our crew here in Norfolk, I'm Pam Ward. This has been a presentation of ESPN, a worldwide leader in sports. You can always log on to ESPN.com. We'll see you from Norfolk. BSB Award. Excellence in sports. It brings us back to where we are tonight. Two teams, one dream, and the memories of days gone by. Coming up next on ESPN.
ESPN. Rivalries are born. Now it's time to play as number two Connecticut takes on number three Tennessee. Then at nine, it's a Conference USA matchup as Cincinnati battles Charlotte. Also airing now on ESPN2, number 25 Seton Hall heads south to take on Miami. Then at nine, it's the biggest rivalry in college hoops as number four North Carolina heads to Cameron to take on number two Duke. But first, let's go live to Thompson Bowling Arena for tonight's first game. Well, folks, it does not get any better than this. Connecticut versus Tennessee. Only the third time in this rivalry. Neither team ranked number one. A capacity crowd here at Thompson Bowling Arena to cheer on the Huskies and Lady Balls. The most intense rivalry in the women's game. And the players also know how special tonight is. This is a game now of the year, and everyone lives for this. Like I said, I know I'm going to have family and folks at home that couldn't make it down in this game having popcorn and like 20 people in a living room crowded around watching, t watching this game. So it's, it's huge. To the Randall family watching back in Ohio, this is for you. Must see TV, UT and Connecticut starting lineup and opening tip when we come back. Day in, day out, year after year since 1965. ESPN's presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by New York Life, the company you keep. By Just For Men, more than a hair color, it's the rejuvenation.